Laura Haywood interviews. I'm Laura Haywood. My guest today has created the quintessential must-have gift for everyone on your holiday list. I'm talking everyone. It's a picture book, so you can get it for the little ones. And many people may see A is for Audra only as a book for kids, but don't be fooled by the large format and colorful illustrations. This is a celebration of the women in musical theater that have inspired all fans of the genre and the strong female characters and a sprinkling of men who contributed to their creations who have defined the modern musical theater. And even with just 26 letters in the alphabet, there are over 70 divas included in this book. We've got an hour. I want to talk about as many of them as we can. John Robert Allman is a graduate of Northwestern University, New York's University, New York University Stern School of Business, and BMI's Musical Theater Workshop. He saw his first Broadway show, Anna Get Your Gun, now star. Uh, Anna Get Your Gun, starring Bernadette Peters, who was featured in the book when he was nine years old. He now works at HBO. John Robert Allman, thank you for creating this incredible book, and welcome to Laura Haywood Interviews. Of course. Thank you for having me. I am holding in my hands a big, beautiful, illustrated picture book featuring basically every woman I admire on the Broadway <laughs> stage, at least those have been, who have been around for a bit. Yes. Um, you know, it's... I can't... I, can only imagine the editing process uh, in A is for Audra. Um, first of all, will you tell the story about how this uh, this project got started? Because it's you didn't sit down to write a book for publication. Absolutely. It was completely an accident. Um, I was sort of making fun of one of my coworkers at a theater agency that I used to work at because even though we worked, you know, day in and day out on Broadway shows, she sort of didn't really know her divas and I thought that was the funniest thing that like you know I'm not gonna say who but like we'd be gossiping or whatever watching videos about certain you know favorite Broadway stars and she would have no idea who they were so I was like this is not cool we have to fix this and somebody so, did not educate you when you were a youth <laughs> exactly you didn't have this book um so as like a gag I designed a bunch of posters that, that were like old school classroom posters that said A is for Audra, B is for Bernadette, C is for Cheetah. And I printed them out on like the company printer and put them at her <laughs> desk as a joke. And then like one thing led to another and people kept walking by and seeing them and thinking they were funny. And like, then we had an office baby shower and like, it sort of just was something that I kept turning over and over in my head that eventually realized could be really cute as a picture book, like an alphabet book. Mm -hmm. um, so I sort of got obsessed with the idea, ended up writing it. I was actually doing my MBA at Stern at the time and was sort of bored in class over a few weeks and just sort of banged it out on the side of like case studies in the middle of class um, and then showed it to a few friends and people thought it was clever and like that it was a good enough idea that it could be something. And so I sort of just like pitched it around and one thing led to another and here we are. I feel like one thing led to another is one of those terms. It's like yada, 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 <laughs> but it's like, that's where the good stuff is where, so, so you, you didn't draw the pictures, right? You have no. a collaborator. Um, is it Peter Emmerich or Emmerich? Emmerich. Emmerich. And um, so how did you two find each other and what does pitching it around look like? Do you <laughs> Google like kids book publications and send cold cold submissions exactly is it's, that really what you actually did actually incredibly democratized and incredibly like easy to do and sort of find out how to do so i did have a slight sort of like boost in that my roommate who was my best friend from high school at the time when i was sort of like obsessed with this idea actually worked in publishing oh well, and that helps yes so all she did though was tell me like honestly john uh if i've learned anything from working in this industry it's that you just never know what's going to work mm -hmm. so like if you believe in this and want to like give it a stab it's like no skin off your back to take a few hours figure out how this all works and pitch it around so I went online um and I basically learned all about the process which is called querying which is basically like pitching your idea to agents that's querying with one e as opposed to queer e -ing. correct yes <laughs> <laughs> um and there's all sorts of websites where agents literally go on, it's sort of like classifieds, and they say like, here are the kinds of books I'm interested in having pitched to me right now based cool. on, and they're very personal about it. And so many agents that I pitched were like, this is a great idea. I think you'll find a home for this, but it's not for me. And it's like a very sort of like personal thing where uh, they only want to represent books that they feel like, you know, really speak to them. Yeah. That they want to be in the weeds dealing with for like years because the process takes so long. I just Googled querying publishing. And the first thing that came up is from a website called nybookeditors.com called how to write a darn good query letter. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and writersdigest.com has one. And there's a ton of great Intel about it online. And all I did was basically like 
over the course of one afternoon, I read all this. You don't even send your manuscript when you pitch it. You basically write like a blurb and working in marketing, that's like, you know, not hard for me. And so, so what was it? It was like, I want to write an ABC's book featuring uh, the like biggest female Broadway stars ever. And you were like, Aud- Audra Liza. Yeah. Because I- spoiler alert, <laughs> the, the book ends with uh, not Zorba, where I thought it might be going, <laughs> um, but but Liza with a Z. Yes, we had we got a little clever for a few trickier letters. Um, but that one's so perfect because Liza with a Z is such a. I mean, did your friend who didn't know her divas know Liza? Of course. And everybody knows about the Z in Liza because of the song. Exactly. Or it's like, you know, a slightly deeper cut, but I feel like eventually sort of explaining to kids that you're giving this to that she did a show called Liza with a Z with a song called Liza with a Z Mm -hmm. is, and then being able to go to YouTube and watch it is like such a cute, incredibly gay, fun, teachable moment. (laughs) (laughs) Um. (laughs) Okay, so did did you query agents did you query uh publishers you start with agents and then it's like sort of on them to know the marketplace and take your project to publishers and editors that they think would like it Uh um so i pitched it around queried like 20 agents that were interested in children's nonfiction, which is like you know a very specific sub-genre of picture book right And as well as a few that were interested in this weird category that I'd never even thought of, but is like so obvious called illustrated gift books. Yeah, this totally, I mean, that's where I first went. I was like, I'm getting this for everyone on my Christmas list. Exactly. And like the kind of book that like you take to a housewarming because you saw it on the table at like Urban or something. (laughs) Um, So did that and only a handful even responded. And then only one, my amazing agent, Kevin, uh, wanted to rep it. We went back and forth for like a few months on a proposal, which again, like not even messing with the actual manuscript. We just did like a seven page document that was like, here's what this book is. Here are comparable titles that have done well and like markets that we think Mm. this could appeal to. We literally did like a market sizing exercise where I sort of crunch numbers based on like how many families go to Broadway shows every year with their kids, how many families go to tours all over the country with their kids, like how many people have watched the Tony Awards are like these big live musicals around the country and sort of like stuff you're Googling. Yeah, pretty much. Uh Yeah. You're Um, like, Oh, kids night on Broadway. And like, you know, having worked in theater for a while, I had like, you know, a few data points that we always bring out about sort of like the national audience for family friendly shows and stuff like that. Um, Yeah. So we put that together and then the first editor that he pitched it to bought it in like a week. And normally it takes like nine months a year. It can be a whole thing or no one buys it. And it's like this painstaking thing that I think would have really like crushed my soul. But he had a, you know, an editor that he loved and had worked with before who happened to love theater, which he didn't even know at the time, who got it and immediately fell in love with it and wanted it. And that was it. And you'd already written it, even though you weren't sending the whole thing. That's curious. I figured that if it was written, especially for something that is... I mean, essentially 26 pages right, long right. that you just send the whole thing. I was, I was going to say, like, it's funny to even call it a manuscript. And it took me so long to get used to that idea because when it's just text, it was like three pages long. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, they don't send it around until they get there. Like that's step two, basically. And then what about the illustrator? How did you and Peter find each other? So Random House actually had had him on like a short list of theirs. They have a Rolodex that they keep of all sorts of illustrators and all sorts of styles. And they drag them out all the time and sort of lay them out. And with a whole bunch of people on their side, try to figure out kind of what the right aesthetic is for each project that comes Mm -hmm. their way that doesn't already have an illustrator. Um, And he was like perfect, had done incredible caricatures of so many of the women in the book and other actresses that I love like he on already his own, had as like them. just as like a personal project he yeah. loved doing that it yeah. does have this feeling of the Sardis wall mm-hmm. you know or like what's the steakhouse that has caricatures it's not it's theater specific but um there's a it's called there's one um man there's one in LA there's one in in Las Vegas, I want to say. Anyway, there used to be one here. It's gone now. I'm. This is this is why sometimes I consider editing my ra- live radio show <laughs> when I put it out as a free podcast because I'll say something that goes nowhere. I'll forget what I was talking about. But you know, like that's just my style. Is that's I do it live, live. Exactly. And somebody's going to be listening, and they're going to be like, "You're talking about the blah blah blah." And just you know, email me, uh, Laura at lhaywoodmedia.com. Um, or, you know, if you're listening live, you can call in. I forget the phone number, so I can't <laughs> give it right now. <laughs> Great job today, Laura. Uh, yeah, so let's get back to, to Peter's gorgeous illustrations. I mean, on the cover of the book, we have Carol Channing, Audra McDonald, Bernadette Peters, Liza, Patty, and Cheetah. Um, 
these uh, many of these are one name artists. I mean, I guess all of them are. Uh, Carol, I might be like, which Carol? Yeah. But that's probably just because, she, you know, she's not around anymore. And I don't yeah. know. Uh, but Audra, Bernadette, Liza, Patty, Cheetah. Yeah. We the know biggies. where we're going. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bernadette has special resonance for you. Of course. Tell me about that. Uh, so the first time I ever came to New York, I grew up in Texas. And my grandparents, for my 10th birthday when I was nine, a little bit before in the summer, brought me up to the city. And we saw a couple of shows. And the first one was Annie Get Your Gun with Bernadette Peters, um, which you know, for a variety of reasons, blew my mind. <laughs> um, so yes, Bernadette is like my first diva. And uh, <laughs> I feel like, oh my gosh. you know, you just always have a special place in your heart for, for your first. And yeah. I have, <laughs> okay, so the term my first diva just struck such a chord with me. And I imagined it just popped into my head and you've probably already gone over this with your agent and your publisher and your illustrator, but like, I want a collection of 26 board books <laughs> for like toddlers called my first diva A is for Audra. My first diva B is for Bernadette. <laughs> and to do like a little expanded instead of one stanza of, of poetry about each one. I want like, 10 stanzas of poetry of each one. <laughs> Can you imagine the box set? Oh, yeah. A My series first of diva. 70, 70 board books. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess you'd. Ha well, I feel like you do one for each letter of the alphabet. Yeah. So, you know, there is. We'll, we're going to talk about as many of these as we can, but we are going to jump around a little bit. Um, X is for extra. X is for all of the extraordinary, exciting, exalted extras. Who... Extra, exceptional, exalted, exciting, and excellent dames. Exactly. Um, so you could do one, one, the X book, <laughs> I feel like could feature a bunch of those. And maybe you even like throw a, like a little mirrored page that's like. <laughs> for you. Yeah. Um, well, or you could, I mean, the why in the book is, you know, who's you know who's last if you don't take a guess, dot, dot, dot. And then it goes into Liza. Um, but the why could be, is it you? Do you <laughs> sing? Do you dance? Do you want to be on Broadway someday? There you go. Yeah, so you can have that idea. I relinquish the rights <laughs> Thank to you. Thank you so much. Um, but I do think that um, an expanded, once this, you know, hits the bestseller list, <laughs> millions of copies sell, it's translated into all the languages in the world and, and people are banging down your door for additional product. <laughs> uh, I think an individual letter series is in the works. Perfect. We'll expand. Um, so you want to hear my Bernadette Peters story? Please. Um, when I was 10, I want to say, uh, I saw the pre Broadway tryout of into the woods. Wow. In San Francisco. Amazing. And it has taken me forever to actually confirm that that show came through San Francisco before it went to New York. It just, in the, in the pre-internet era, there wasn't a lot of, like, the, like the records weren't as good. Right. You um, can just, like, I, look it up. But my sister and I would be like, we saw her. We didn't go to New York until, I only came to New York one time before I moved here when I was 25, and that was when I was 13. But my sister and I both had this very clear memory of seeing Bernadette Peters, not just somebody in the same costume, but Bernadette Peters. It wasn't the tour. Yeah. It was before it came to Broadway. Oh. Um, and so that was, you know, like one of, one of her quintessential roles. Right. And so to have seen it, even though I barely remember it, yeah. is pretty special. Amazing. Do you have personal... Uh, relation, not relationships, but like personal emotional connections to all of these divas. Um, did you, was there anybody that you were like, that you had to dig a little bit deeper to find? Some of them are from quite a while ago. Yeah. Like I imagine you never saw Ethel Merman perform. No, of course, so many of them that I never saw live. Um, but like, I'm a pretty intense, like diva queen and I didn't really have to do any research, I'll say. So okay. I kind of like had like a few facts at the very least about each person that we wanted to feature. And I could sort of just like draw on that to actually write everything. What was the editing process like? Because there are, so, there are certain people, it's like, I feel like, and of course this is a letter that is very, and a name that's very close to my heart, but I'm like, you could do a whole series of books just on musical theater divas named Laura. I know. You know? It's and I like, would love to. I, I mean, actually have a t-shirt that says, 
Benanti and Osnes and Bundy and Kelly and Dreyfus and Haywood, <laughs> which are all of the Laura's, like the, the superstar Laura's of Broadway, plus me. So funny. Um, and uh, so, but then I, so I was like, who's, I, it's got to be Laura Benanti. And then I was like, oh, of course it's Leia Salonga. Yeah. Um, I, you know, but I'm like, the, I don't know, maybe that's another idea for your board book series is to do like more than one. It was sort of like a blessing and a curse. Like on the one hand, I wanted to find ways to fit in as many people as we could. And I feel like we sort of did that where we could. Um, But on the flip side, I feel like you do get a little bit of a pass because of the format too. So it's like, oh, you know, you can basically only do, you know, one person per letter. Or, you know, if you can find a clever way to do more than one there are sort of like rules and restrictions around those in in terms of how it would actually make sense. So like for certain ones, we have roles that a bunch of iconic women have played, but you're not going to be able to cram in people that haven't played that role. Obviously you have to sort of follow the rules. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I feel like you can't be too hard on us for the, some of the choices that we made not because like, you know, it's someone's first name or last name and you really only get one per letter. And if someone iconic can't you know squeeze in that way under their letter then it's because someone else iconic is in there instead so So in at least one case you have two different you like you were like it's also four yes and you put a man in i know we did why are you why do you say it like that i'm not being critical of it (laughs) but you reacted like like you're not well i do feel like it was a sort of like a dicey choice in a way because I feel like to have this book that's celebrating the leading ladies of Broadway and for a handful of them to sort of be defined in this very cursory sort of like, you know, very, very basic 101 sort of introduction by men with whom they were associated in Mm -hmm. their careers is like, you know, it's not the best look. But at the same time, it's like undeniable that their two contributions to musical theater were great. And because we put them in that way, we were able to fit, I think it's nine more women in the book. So the one that I was referring to is Sondheim. And Mm -hmm. and you didn't give S solely to Sondheim. Right. S is for Sutton. Right. Who's singing and tapping, keeps spectators chanting and cheering and clapping. Um, It's also for Sondheim. And when you, so first of all, you do let S represent a strong woman, of Broadway. Fair. Uh, so I, so that's good. You didn't like, there was no erasure <laughs> of women with S names. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, yeah, you get to, when you talk about Sondheim, you reference Joanna Gleason as the Baker's wife and in into the woods, Donna Murphy as Fosca, uh, Alec- Alexis Smith as Phyllis Roger Stone and Follies, Glennis Johns as, as Desiree Armfelt and Angela Lansbury as Mrs. Lovett in Sweeney Todd. And like, the book is A is for Audra. So what were you going to do? Not put Angela Lansbury in a, exactly. in a book yeah. about uh, Broadway divas. So I think that I, while I think it could be said that if you're making a book about the divas of Broadway, like like it's not a, it's not a space for men. Right. But when you are creating an opportunity for more exposure to more of these beautiful divas, and that's a workaround. Right. Uh, um, Plus, Stephen Sondheim can go wherever he wants. Exactly. And it's sort of like, I also, in the way that we picked which shows we wanted to represent each diva in, Mm we sort of did that with an eye for what shows and cast albums and Tony Award YouTube videos do we want to sort of introduce people to as well. So I'm a huge Sondheim fan. um, And the Angela Lansbury sort of workaround was definitely a part of that decision. But I also think being able to introduce people, you know, young people to all of all five of those shows um, is really exciting and sort of like selfishly. I love that we got to do that. So you, you said you didn't have to do research for this. Um, Did you just start, I mean, in addition or like the next step after making the A, B and C for your coworker who didn't know her Broadway Mm -hmm. diva ABCs, did you just like off the top of your list, Uh, I mean, off off the top of your head, make a list of every diva you could think of and then alphabetize them? Pretty much, yeah. I made a Google sheet. Mm -hmm. I put A through Z in one column, and then I just listed first and last every one I could think of that sort of needed to be in there next to it. Uh And then it sort of became like a little bit like Sudoku, where you're trying to sort of move people around to make sure you're like really covering your bases and being clever and fitting in as many people as you can without leaving anyone that really needs to be in there out and sort of like see how it works, you know? So we played with it for a little bit, um, 
and then sort of it like found a balance and we had this way of fitting more people in under x that sort of gave us like that uh that page to fall back on for anyone that sort of right. got left out so you could i assume that the page with the extras changed who was going to be in there as you experimented with putting different people under different letters exactly and moving them around yeah and i mean i would have had that be like a, at one point we literally did talk about having it be a gatefold where two pages would have then folded out uh -huh. and it would have been twice as big as it is now when we really could have fit in even more people which would have been amazing for me and you know helped with so much like you know head banging when we were trying to figure out exactly who to leave there um but probably a nightmare for our illustrator so who didn't make I, the cuts? I can't even go there. It's, it's too emotional um, because honestly, there are so many people that I love and that were on the list at one point and then for a variety of reasons and through like really, really painful conversations with my editors, uh -huh. we eventually sort of like shuffled around and we landed where we landed. Uh -huh. But I mean, again, I, I could write three more of these. We could do, it could have been 300 pages long from the start, like this page alone could have been twice as big, right. um, which would have been like overkill, a little absurd, but at the same time, right. so exciting. Like all we wanna do is celebrate as many people as we can. And it was a, a shame at a certain point when we realized that we were sort of like hitting our limit and just in terms of what was feasible for this one book. But I think at the same time, it's really meant to just be like a gateway for kids that gets them into sort of the tip of the iceberg of, this these iconic actresses and hopefully i think turns them on to again like shows or albums or whatever that keep introducing them to more and more of the yeah. canon yeah i love that so, and, and I'm, I'm glad that was your answer because i heard the question coming out of my mouth like who, <laughs> who didn't make the cut and i was like oh let's let's celebrate the people we're celebrating not like you know right and i runners I, up are, are nice and everything but like the point is is the is the positivity, not the rejection. Exactly, and I think I was really truly like lost sleep in like the months before it came out because I kept hoping that, you know, nobody would come at it from a place of like holding it in their hands and immediately thinking, okay, so who's missing? Mm -hmm. Which is like such a bummer to go there. Yeah, sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> um, but people have mostly gotten it and been like, holy shit, like, I just can't believe this exists. I wish I had it when I was a kid. Like the fact that you're seeing these people that, you know, we all have such, you know, specific emotional connections to in this way with these amazing illustrations that Peter did. I think 99% of people that I've heard from or that I was like, I was just scared people were going to come for me on Twitter about like their fave not being there or whatever. And really no one has, which that's has so been great. amazing. And I think that's sort of like the spirit of this community is like, we're all just excited that this exists period and that who's in there is in there. Yeah. And it's on like, you know, you can educate the kids that you're giving this to about your own favorite divas that might not be in there on your own anyway. Sure. And it's sort of like a conversation starter that is really only meant to be like a one Uh one -huh. you know? Perfect. <laughs> uh, you know what, it, what else is basically like an A to Z of, of famous names is all the blurbs that you got for this book. I mean, Audra herself yeah. blurb the book. Yeah. And for those who don't know the, very industry term blurb um which also is just a funny thing to say um <laughs> it it's when somebody reads the book in advance and gives you a compliment about it that gets then printed on either a press release or the back or the um like what do you call it the like the flap, jacket flaps. the inner flaps yeah. yeah of the of the book um Audra herself says it's an incredible honor to be included in this amazing book of the greatest talent on the the, the Broadway stage has ever known and um, you know, when you name a book after someone, it's nice for them to be a fan of it. Exactly. Yeah. She was unbelievable. And every time we got one of these, I lost it. I was like, you know, did anybody write you like write it in their handwriting? No, they were just, cause your publisher, I assume solicited these and then they emailed back a comment. We tag teamed. So uh -huh. they handled some and then other people that I sort of had personal connections with through one thing or another, I emailed, but 90% of them, we went through people's reps. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like we were talking to anyone directly and they all came through on email. Um, but it was still like, you know, incredibly magical to. Again, I'm not trying to take the wind out of your sails. <laughs> I'm just picturing like if you had, you know, like 26 oh my God. postcards from these like people. Like stationary from everyone. Yeah, that exactly. That would be amazing. Um, um, especially from some of them who aren't around anymore. That would yeah. really be, uh, really be 
impressive. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I noticed reading the um, the praise and really, I mean, the names are, it's like Cheetah, Christine Ebersole, Heather Headley, Renee Elise Goldsberry, Kristen Chenoweth, Kelly O'Hara, Leia Salonga, Laura Osnes. And then I got down to a few where I was like, oh, Susan Stroman, Janine Tesori, Lynn Ahrens. These are all incredible women of Broadway who don't fall under divas because they're behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. And this was just like how you defined it as women, as women. It's also defined as people who made their their living on the stage, Mm -hmm. with the exception of like mentioning Sondheim, who falls outside of that category in a couple of ways. But I was like, I wonder if you could make a Broadway, like women of Broadway off (laughs) stage. What's the equivalent word of diva? Right. You know, like creators. Yeah. Um, Well, one thing that we were excited about just in getting those ladies to blurb, and I'm so glad you brought this up, is just that even as, you know, young kids who are reading this book or young women who are reading this book are perusing the back and they see that those people are credited not as actors, but, you know, composers, choreographers, directors, writers, whatnot. It's like just another small reinforcement of the variety of ways you can be in this community and be part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, So getting those, and they were obviously all so lovely, was um, amazing. And I think having them on the back right alongside all of the actresses is uh, really special. And Lynn Ahrens even wrote hers in rhyme. Honestly, that that might have been like the most sort of like mind blowing to receive. Um, And I actually asked her for it myself. She actually went through the BMI workshop as a writer, which is where she met Stephen and they started working together, um, which is a musical theater writing workshop that I also went through. It's a two year program. And then you it's sort of like speed dating for composer lyricists and I was a lyricist so it really actually did help me so much with you know really practicing like rhythm and making sure that everything scanned and rhyme and all of that which kind of went into the book indirectly um but through that I sort of just reached out to her sent her the book asked her if she would do it and then she came back and wrote us a rhyme which is like her thing obviously as a lyricist and it was just like mind-blowingly special divas of theater in pictures and rhyme read them out loud it's a fabulous time yeah yeah, cue me sobbing at my desk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's such a joyful thing, this book. And I think that's one of the things we all need more of in our lives, right? And one thing that Broadway is so good at. Yeah. And we are in an era where there is dark subject matter on the Broadway stage. And even in a lot of these, the you know, Broadway has always done that. Uh, but I still think people go to the theater to escape and consider the lives the, you know, the, the world around them and, um, overwhelmingly people find joy in it. Mm-hmm. And, um, even just like seeing an illustration of Christine Ebersole as little Edie brings back, you know, that is a dark gray gardens is a dark show, but it's also so funny. Yeah. And that performance was just above and beyond so much that I, and I've, I've seen hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of Broadway performances yeah. and, you know, you the the illustration and the you know the text that you've written, it brings me back to seeing that performance. And I think also if you hadn't seen it, you'd be like, who is this character all in red wearing like something that sort of looks like a nun's habit, but it's also a crop, like, or I mean, like a halter top, and it's all bright red. Like, who is this? Yeah. Uh, which would make you curious about both the character and the actor. Yeah, and I think a big part of that too, if I can shout out. Um, Peter's work again yeah. like he he truly has like this incredible innate like I don't even know how to fully describe it ability to just sort of capture someone's personality and really distill that into an illustration so you're not only seeing like you know something that just looks like them but it's like you feel their what it feels like to see them on stage or to watch them or hear them mm-hmm. um and I I just think it makes the book I mean it's they're so stunning and he did such an amazing job there are several um caricaturists that are really associated with Broadway. There's um, Al Hirschfeld is the most famous, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, our friend Squiggs mm-hmm. does the Lights of Broadway show cards. Um, and, uh, you know, there are a few others. And and I, what I, one thing I know about caricatures is that they're about sort of enhancing certain features in a way where you're kind of like, like somebody who has a, a chin that juts out in the caricature to like be giant. Mm-hmm. Uh, these feel a little more r- realistic yeah. than a traditional caricature, if there is such a thing. Yes. Um, where the feeling of a children's book 
a children's illustration while also feeling like like you're you could be at Sardi's mm-hmm. is such a, a like it's a fine line yes. and I feel like Peter walks it perfectly. I was gonna say it, there was a lot of back and forth I think early on when the art director was working with him to sort of find the style that they ended up doing all of the illustrations in. And and it is true that some of them in there are sort of a little bit more pushed than others Mm -hmm. that look a little bit more sort of realistic, for lack of a better word. But um, I think especially knowing that it was a children's book and not wanting to necessarily like skew anyone's sort of like look Mm -hmm. too, too far from, uh, you know, how they really look in real life while at the same time sort of enhancing it slightly to just make it pop and give it that sort of life that's so, uh, I think, great caricatures have like you look at a Hirschfeld drawing it doesn't really look in certain senses like the person but at the same time it so does you know exactly Instantly who it you is know. exactly yeah um Even, and it, with his it's so crazy because it's like one line yeah it's I mean nuts so they walked that line and I think landed in like a visual vocabulary that does both really well but uh-huh. in a way that isn't like objectifying in an in that you know that it like draws out certain features in an unrealistic way. Uh huh. Although Liza's eyes are just, <laughs> they take up half of her face. And they were in real life. Yeah, exactly. Um, they are. Are. <laughs> <laughs> She's still with us. Thankfully. Um, yeah. Uh, you did a staged version of this in November. What was that like? It was unbelievable. Um, so the 92nd Street Wise musical theater program has this incredible initiative called Page to Stage. And essentially they have a staff that, I want to say maybe 10 times a year works with publishers to get manuscripts pre-publication and adapt them into like 25 minute, very kid friendly uh, musical performances. So this was basically perfect. Yes. I mean, the perfect fit. like fell out of the sky. They heard about it through random house and were like instantly down to, to do something. And I was initially a little bit skeptical because it's not a narrative book, which I think most of what they do is it's not a natural fit, at least to me to sort of take something so you know, not only nonfiction, but also like sort of like wrote in terms of the structure, which just goes through every letter of the alphabet and turn it into something with like a beginning, a middle and an end. Yeah, unless you were actually getting Audra to come out and be like, hey, it's for Audra. And that's satisfying to watch and sort of teaches kids something beyond just like a list of names. Mm -hmm. Um, But they did an incredible job and wrote this kind of cute little like narrative in a sense it was about a girl who walked into a bookstore picked up the book and then in doing so sort of all of the divas in the book came to life around her and taught her not only about iconic divas for like maybe a third of the show but then kind of got into like other people that help make theater possible so composers costume designers directors choreographers all of the creative team members and then like a sort of third section just about theater in general and like it taught kids about upstage versus downstage and like why we call it that and it was incredibly educational there was a little section of like audience participation where kids came up and did like two kicks chorus line style and then got a hat that they got to wear and take home it was it was adorable and they did an incredible job well i think that the obvious question is is this is is this going to be adapted into something for the stage you went through the bmi you know songwriting workshop the the text is so lyrical and it's about theater could there be something with music that I don't know. I mean, I would love it. And I feel like what they've already done is so great and could definitely be part of whatever it would Mm -hmm. eventually become. Um, But it's not something that we've really talked about yet. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still write for musical theater? A little bit on the side. Uh Yeah. I haven't really gotten super excited about any projects since I finished the two year part of the workshop, but they do have like an ongoing sort of advanced is what they call it, where you can drop in once a week and try out new material and sort of stay active in the workshop. Mm -hmm. And I'm still a member, but I just haven't really had anything going on since I've been doing this. Do you write music? You said you were a lyricist. Only lyrics. So do you have a music partner, like a composing partner, or do you still work with a variety of people when you want to you know, I don't have a go-to. Go into that? Yeah, yeah, it's sort of more like when the right idea sort of possesses you or <laughs> us or whatever. There's a handful of people that I met through the workshop that I like sit down with and kind of mess around with and uh-huh. see if it's see driving if for both of us. But we haven't really... Like second dates. <laughs> if, if the <laughs> exactly. first round is speed dating, now mm-hmm. you're doing second dates. Exactly. I just, I feel like I, I have such a, uh, like affection for this project that I realized that by being like, well, what's next? Is it going to be a stage show? Is it going to be a cartoon? (laughs) Is it going to be, you know, that that is, I hope that it comes across as a, how much I love this book and not a, this book isn't enough because it (laughs) it is also 
it's already it's already perfect just the way it is. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I agree. Um, <laughs> Who are you giving this book to for the holidays? Oh, God. Everyone in my life is so sick of it, I think. <laughs> I've been, like, I'm, self-promotion, and I'm sure you know this, is, like, weird. Mm. And yes, it's I do been know that. <laughs> new for me to sort of have something that I've been so excited about wanting to share with everyone in my life. But it's, the process is long. Yeah. So I came up with this idea two and a half years ago, or a little more even. And then it sold and has been sort of really in the works in earnest since September of 2017. Wow. Which is nothing compared to a Broadway show, which on average can take like eight years or a decade to get there. Yeah, and but it's more than having, like creating and, and having a baby. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You know? And and so I've been like, you know, going through various stages of living with sort of like that process for so long and to finally just have it out there and for people to be enjoying it and to be able to talk about it, you know, in a real way and for people to be able to see it and give it to people. And I'm seeing like Instagrams of people giving it to their little cousins. It's like very nice. Um, so yeah, I, I just, uh, I don't know. I've been getting used to all of that, which has been fun. Um, what, what do you do at HBO? I work in marketing, uh, -huh. uh for it originals so mostly series but um occasionally like special sports stuff um news programming movies but mostly series um and does it cross over with your work as like a lyricist at all do you ever like are you writing copy in a lyrical style are you like maybe i'll write a lyrics for a jingle about watchmen <laughs> you know or whatever like not directly so much of the time I think sort of like having a creative muscle is what got me into marketing in the first place mm -hmm. and I really came at it from like a sort of like copywriting slash cleverness slash creative place mm -hmm. and did a lot of graphic design growing up and really came into it from the creative side and then like as I've gotten older have sort of like you know gotten more into all things marketing and there's all sorts of like analytics that we do and media planning and buying and like the drier side of things mm -hmm. that I do day to day as the well. The science versus the art. Exactly. And it always kind of has to be a marriage of both. So it does come into play. I do write copy occasionally. I like give notes on creative all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think having like the sort of quote unquote soft skills of like, you know, the vocabulary of collaborating with people and talking about creative work in a respectful way and all of that, um, you know, is something that is super important in writing as well as in marketing. So um, there's definitely some crossover, but not, not, so so much of the time they're obviously being very like cool with you having this project because we are in the middle of a work day yeah um we're live on the radio and it's i mean i guess technically it could be your lunch hour because we're <laughs> live noon to one but like the that's huge that a day job would let you leave for yeah, you know, they've been amazing about it. A couple it. hours in the middle of the day. And it's such a creative place, and all of my team members are so creative and so amazing and kind of all have things going on mm -hmm. um, that they've just been so gracious about, sort of like it's really not every day that something like this happens to someone and they get to go sort of do the stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. And I guess as long as you get your work done. Exactly. That's yeah. the kind of I, place I to I won't work. lie. I was actually in the office for like five hours on Saturday, so Good. you know, you make it work. Well, I'm glad that you, that you have that on the record <laughs> in case anybody ever complains. You there can, you go. You can point them towards the free podcast. <laughs> Podcast version of this show, which is available in one week. Um, I think passion projects are important. You know, you're talking about self promotion, and this came from such an organic place. I think so, so often people, I hear from a lot of young people in particular who are like, for me, it's I want to be an influencer. And I'm like, what does that mean to you? And they're like, well, I just want to like get paid to put pictures of stuff on Instagram. I'm like, okay. That's not a job. Like, <laughs> I mean, it is. People do that, but but very rarely do they get there by trying to get there. Right. Um, and for me, while I occasionally will partner, like right now I'm doing a partnership with Broadway HD where we're giving the gift of uh, Broadway HD, which is like a streaming uh, platform for Broadway shows. I'm doing a partnership for the holidays, and, you know, you get a discount for for using the code Laura25 at broadwayhd.com slash gift. I did not mean for this to be a commercial for them, but <laughs> um, but we are partnered this holiday season. And for me, I'm like, that's because my the influence that I have on the world is bringing joy to people through my contagious enthusiasm. And very often that is enthusiasm about Broadway. And so they were like, who, you know, who do we want to help share the message of this joyful product? And they came to me. And so... 
and and all of the, what I built through my Broadway girl quote unquote brand, which is not a word I love, um, happened just because I started writing down what made me happy to write down. Yeah. People found it totally. Um, and I love that this book wasn't. You weren't like, oh, there's a hole in the market that that. I can fill and it's going to make me X number of dollars. And what's the algorithm to figure out what that thing is. You were doing something that made you giggle for (laughs) a friend that then took on a life of its own and became a thing. And yeah, you have to apply analytics to it and you have to like go through the dry work of, you know, pitching the or querying the agents and pitching (laughs) the publishers and, you know, but it started from, like your heart. And at the end of the day too, I always say like, this is the gift I wished I could give friends, kids that just Mm -hmm. didn't exist. And like to be, I think there's something so amazing about theater fans is that like that their passion is so contagious. And like, there's nothing better I think than like taking someone you love to a show you love and watching them watch it or that, that sort of energy I think is very innate to this book. And that's how I feel about it. And like, you know, to happen to have been the person that, like, you know, made it possible in this specific context is was a total accident, but at the same time is, like, so lovely. And I just, you know, I can't wait to give it to my friend's kids for the rest of my life, and uh-huh. I hope that other people feel <laughs> Yeah, you'll way. never have to consider what to give at a baby <laughs> shower ever again. Uh, I, I, um, I think so often we hear the phrase, be the change you want to see in the world, and I usually equate that with activism you know like if you think that so and so should be elected go canvas for them Mm -hmm. or you know but but it doesn't have to be that serious be the change you want to see in the world can be like what what do you think is funny that you've never seen and like make a youtube video about it you know i feel like people always turn it around too and literally just say like write the thing you want to read write the thing you want to watch like that's a totally valid way into any creative pursuit exactly yeah uh, it's, I feel like I, I have now have the gift to give for the rest of my life too. You mentioned watching videos of people giving it to their nieces and nephews. And as a, as a, a woman in my early forties who doesn't have children, my nieces are like, they're the ones that I get to take to shows and watch them watching the shows. Mm-hmm. So and I feel like this is the perfect aunt or uncle gift for yeah. nieces and nephews because while certainly parents have a lot of impact over their kids. Theater is something that, that is especially on the Broadway level can be very, like very much an indulgence. Mm -hmm. And for aunties and uncles, there is something about splurging that to maybe make up for the fact that you don't get to see them that often. Or, you know, the idea that the aunts and uncles don't have to necessarily be dealing with the in and out minutia of every day. They get to share something big and spectacular with their nieces and nephews. And, um, so, uh, I hope they're not listening. They're in school right now, but, uh, (laughs) but my nieces are getting this for Christmas. And, um, and I think they'll probably go in and be like, seen her, seen her, <laughs> need it, seen it, have it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because they already have been spoiled rotten by all of the access that I have. Well, there's like a fun sort of gotta catch them all energy to totally. it too. Where yeah. like, even if you don't necessarily know who someone is or recognize a show, hopefully you like go listen to the recording and mm-hmm. kind of like it's an intro to all of that. And there's something so like ephemeral in a way, especially when you're growing up to like the canon of musical theater where like at school or because you're doing a random community theater show or then in college you like sort of slowly amass that like knowledge of what's what and who's who so like to kind of have all of these ladies and these shows collected into one place I think is also just like a fun little intro to all of that you know how many of these divas have you met in person (sighs) not a lot really I mean I've seen most of them Uh the living ones obviously but um unless I worked with them at some point when I was working in theater marketing, which a few of them I did, um, or you know, have crossed paths with them just at shows or whatnot, or openings or any of that in the last few years, like not a ton. So in, my, in a previous life, I was a celebrity talent booker at Sirius XM Radio, and I had a book, um, it was a Playbill book called like, um, it wasn't Playbill by the year, but it was like the history of Broadway, 
um, and it was broken down by theater. So there were like 40 some chapters Mm -hmm. and it was like 40 individual histories of Broadway. And I kept it at my desk. And every time someone whose, whose name was mentioned in the book came in, I had them sign it. Cute. And so this book now has almost 300 signatures in it. Oh. It's like, I'm going to have to donate it to the the New York Public Library for the performing arts. It has, <laughs> like, I have um, uh, people who are no longer living. I have mothers and daughters who have signed on the same page. I have, you know, like, entire casts of shows, like, you know, like, all five cast members from title of show signed oh. the title, the mention of title of show. And I feel like... You should carry this wherever you go. Carry one copy, and anytime you you come across either at an event or <laughs> on the street or whatever, if you presented this book, like I'm turning to the the X page, the extras page, and if you ran into like Philippa Sue on the street, and you were like, "I wrote this book, and you're in it. Would you sign it for me?" She'd be like, "That's amazing," <laughs> because as much as she's, I'm sure she stopped on the street. Most people are probably like, "Oh my God, Hamilton," yeah. you know. And don't actually have necessarily a conversation to have with her. But if you were like, I did this, I just imagine a version that's just full of signatures that's your forever copy. Yeah. Well, the art director who laid out the book also did this incredible thing with the end papers where they're like autograph book pages. Yeah. Which I didn't even like remember talking about until I actually got the book and then was like, this is so cute. Um, So hopefully I think people will like take their kids to stage doors and can kind of use it as like their Disney world style autograph book too. Well, I'm going to have you autograph the autograph page. (laughs) Have you been signing books? I have, which is so weird, but also fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Where can people get it? It's everywhere, anywhere you can get books. So like Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Indie Bound, you can get it at like local bookstores all over the city. Uh Yeah. I imagine there will be a big display of them at the new drama bookshop when that reopens this spring. Yeah. I was so bummed that it's been like, you know, right around the book coming out there wasn't one because it would have been so fun to do like an event there or launch it there we did like a really amazing event at books of wonder who are amazing and have actually have signed copies there if anyone wants one oh that's good to know um that you can go in and get that peter and i both signed um but yeah hopefully it'll be there i always encourage people to support their local independent Mm -hmm. bookstore um so i'm really glad to hear that it is in wide release and not just available through the big sellers although you know like buy it wherever you can buy it yeah Um, but if there is a little bookstore in your town usually here's another um another tip usually if a book does not i mean if a if an independent bookstore does not have a book in stock they can order it so if you go in and and say you want to support them and can they please order this book um a is for audra they usually can get it to you pretty quickly. And that way your business can go to, um, you know, someone who's providing jobs and, you know, supporting a family uh, as opposed to a big box company. And uh, that's something that I care about a lot. So amazing. I also just signed like 50 copies at book culture for New Yorkers. So all their locations have those. They're the best. Cool. Uh, There's another element of this book that is so cool and so I think like you didn't have to do it and you did, which is that a portion of the proceeds from the purchase of the book is donated directly to Broadway cares, equity fights AIDS. Yeah. Which I love. I was so happy when the publisher let us do that. So that was your idea. Mm -hmm. And, and for those who don't know, can you describe Broadway cares, equity fights AIDS and the work they do? Uh, They do the best work. Um, So basically over, you know, the last like two decades, I want to say, I don't have like the exact talking points in front of me, but they've raised millions of dollars for people living with critical illnesses, including HIV and AIDS, um, and also support all of the programs and services, or, you know, in large part, the programs and services of the Actors Fund. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm sure, you know, theater fans who come to New York and or see tours across the country have seen the, you know, the classic red buckets that they collect with after shows. Um, You might have heard this speech. Yeah. Exactly. Twice a year, the Broadway <laughs> community comes together and raises money for Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS. Um, it, it's a, it is the quintessential care organization for the New York theater community. It has AIDS in the name, but that is by far not the only um, cause that they support, um, in addition to the Actors Fund, which can provide everything from, like, um, you know, housing help to, you know, like... Uh, medical stuff to maybe you just need to call and say, you know, my, 
my heat got turned off and I need some help covering it because my auditions aren't being fruitful right now. Um, that they, they handle so many mm-hmm. just needs for actors. Um, since it is such a roller coaster of a career, the Susan G. Komen, uh, breast cancer organization, um, the, the Al Hirschfeld free health clinic. These are all off the top of my head because I have, gone to so many shows during uh, the Broadway Cares collecting season and again those famous red buckets Um, also actually I published an article on Broadway World earlier this week about the Broadway Cares um, catalog of giving which has a whole catalog of gift ideas if for some reason you need I was going to say if you if you want something other than this book, but I will say in addition to this book, there you, you can get <laughs> you can get ornaments. There's stuffed animals. There's like beach towels and apparel and um, this gorgeous snow globe that's limited edition each year that all raise money for Broadway Cares. And I think that at least as of our live broadcast on December 9th, you can still order from the Broadway Cares catalog of giving in time to get gifts delivered to you for Christmas. Double check that before you you buy, but like, look, they come late. The real gift you're giving is the gift to Broadway Cares. Mm-hmm. Um, and broadwaycares.org is the website for that. I know one question that you've been asked is whether there will be a male version of this, <laughs> and you have a stock answer for that, which is... Do I? Um, I mean, hopefully. We'll see. I thought it I was know. we have to first decide whether we're going to call it A is for Alfred or A is for Alan. That's true, too. That's like my little <laughs> That's joke. where I've seen it. See, that's <laughs> what I've seen you say a couple of times. Um, yeah, Alfred Drake or Alan Cumming. Gotta, gotta pick one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the fact that zero Mostel is like such an obvious Z yeah, is like a sign. Totally. Um, but we'll see. I don't know. Uh, so you <laughs> haven't started like brainstorming the list yet? No. That's mm. it. We got the top and we got the bottom. I don't know if I, ha- if I believe you. <laughs> I feel like... I feel like that's the answer you're supposed to give until the press release comes out. <laughs> but I'm here for it. Yeah. I think you should do it. <laughs> but really, like, I really, I want a set of board books. <laughs> uh, yeah, the box set. Exactly. Um, do you, is this too short to be an audiobook? I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like there are so many incredible voices we could get to do it. Um, that that aspect of it alone is, like, so tempting. But I don't know. I don't know that, you know, children's rhyming sort of alphabet books like this that are so short really do do a lot of that kind of thing. I wonder if there's footage that you could get of these people performing that's like in the public domain or that you could get per, like and make a little YouTube. Oh, my God. We've actually thought about doing like a Spotify playlist or a YouTube playlist oh, that just yeah. sort of as a supplementary thing can kind of be on the random house accounts for people to dive into. We haven't done it yet, but we totally should. I feel like anybody could do that. Yeah, like totally. you could make, I could make a playlist of my favorite Audra song, my favorite Bernadette song, my favorite exactly. Cheetah song. Um, oh wait, Bernadette isn't B. I keep, this is like the fifth time I've said Bernadette was B. Bernadette is Q. Yeah. Spoiler. B is for Barbara and Barbara too. Both versatile vocalists equaled by few. Barbara Streisand as Fanny Bryce and Barbara Cook as Marianne Pardue from The Music Man. Uh, why is Bernadette Q? She's, she's my queen. No, that was just another example where we really wanted to fit in and feature in a big way as many people as we could. Q is sort of like a classic problem letter in all alphabet books. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just made sense. It was funny. It I feel always like. is queen, I feel like. It, a lot of times, <laughs> yes. Um, and, you know, she was the star of the first Broadway show I ever saw. And I wanted to pay tribute to that in a fun way. I like that rhyme is twice as long as all the rest. I noticed that too. I sort of thought they were going to change. Like I just did that because I was like, you know, fuck it. Like this will be fun. And they didn't. So it's in there forever. Um, But it just sort of just gives her, you know, a lot of fanfare, which I love. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think that it also, her personal connection to you has its own, it's a little wink to that. Um, both as the fact that she's the queen, but also because you give her twice the space. Yeah. Um, I imagine kids all over the country and adults, but kids being a stand in for just readers of this book. Right. And being like, oh, look at these four divas from Chicago. Um, Gwen Verdon and ranking BB Newirth and Velma Kelly and being like, well, who's your favorite Roxy yeah. of all time? Well, who's your favorite Velma of all time? You know, and, uh, and being like, oh, well, that's actually a movie. What if we watch the movie and sh- the, the 
classic Fosse poses are also represented in here. In fact, F is for Fosse. Um, it's this, the other, the other example. Yeah. But it does allow you to, um, to represent these other women. I think I've also been saying C is for cheetah, but cheetah's represented under F, under, uh, F for Fosse. C is for Christine. So, my apologies for getting those <laughs> those wrong throughout the interview, but I think the point is clear that there is an entire range of divas yeah. featured throughout the whole time I've been like you know talking it up for the last two and a half years. Everyone I've talked to has had that moment where they're like, "Oh my God, is is C Cheetah or Carol Channing?" Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Neither." Yeah. Surprise. Yeah. And actually, both of those women are on the front of the book. Yes. And neither of them is the C. So we had to get clever and... C is for clever. You know, mix it up to try and squeeze in as many people as we could. And I think we did okay. You did a great job. <laughs> I'm thrilled to have A is for Audra, Broadway's leading ladies from A to Z on my shelf. And it's going to be on the shelf of my nieces. Spoiler alert, uh, girls, if you're listening. Um, and I... I, I really want you to... I want every woman featured in this book to see it. And we sent them to, to everyone, yeah. pretty much. And so. I want you, but I want them to all sign a copy for you <laughs> as like the ultimate reward for having loved them as long as you have. I just so. got to start carrying one around in my backpack of course. everywhere I go. <laughs> I mean, do it. Get a backpack, you yeah. know? Um, find the book anywhere you find books, especially your local independent bookstore. Thank you for listening to Laura Haywood interviews. Thank you so much, John Robert Allman, for being here. Thank you for um, having me. Will you tell us where we can find you on social media? Ooh, uh, at Johnny underscore Allman on Instagram and Spelled Twitter. just like you think. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just want to thank everybody for listening, especially those who are listening live. This is not a show I get paid to make. In fact, I pay to make it. And anybody who listens on dnrstudios.com slash Laura, uh, which costs a few bucks, but not too much, uh, gets every episode a week early and can even listen live. So, of course, I love you if you listen to the free podcast. But if you have a few bucks to spare, check out dnrstudios.com slash Laura. I'm Laura Haywood. Thank you, John Robert Allman. This has been Laura Haywood Interviews.